Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship at Prince of Peace. A special welcome to any guests or visitors that we have with us today. You're invited to sign in either in those gray pew cards or uh, in the visitor center in the back. Uh, Today we have uh, a fantastic opportunity. It's our fifth week of stewardship. Believe it or not, we have been doing a stewardship conversation ever since we started putting the, the leaves on the tree in the back as we've been asking ourselves, why is faith important? Why is church important? Why is Prince of Peace important? And last week we moved to, how do we do this? How do we continue to be a church that is growing and thriving? And today specifically, we are going to talk about how we each are an offering. Now, to ground ourselves in that, it's beautiful as I sit back here to look around the room and notice all the hands and hearts that make worship possible. For some, it's, it's obvious who is making worship possible, right? The people up front, we have intern Sharon, our choir, our music, our head usher in the back, but also all the hands that work throughout the week to make worship possible. Our sacristans who clean and, and set the altar every day. Those faithful people who come in and sharpen the pencils and clean the pews. So much of what we do is a collaboration. And that's what I want you to root your hearts in this morning as we begin worship, because that is at the core uh, of how our God calls us to live and work. Now, the other gift that we have as we gather for worship is that uh, ELCA Lutherans, I think, have created a powerful way to do worship that calls us together and grounds us in the first thing we do in God's grace. We are grounded in God's grace as we start today with a confession and forgiveness. And so I invite you to stand as we confess uh, our, our faults and our sins and our struggles and then hear a word of forgiveness. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the Holy Spirit who makes our joy complete. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us, for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us, for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us, lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, we are already and always forgiven. Amen. Let us sing.
Lord be with you. Holy God, your son came to light the way for us and teach us how to live a full and meaningful life. Give us the courage to follow him and a deep sense of your presence as we navigate the living of these days. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Full reading as you're able. All right, today's reading is from two sections of Matthew. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Please be seated, and we can invite the kids forward for children's time. (laughs) Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing today? Me. Okay. Hey, before we get started, can we give Jim a big round of applause? Because he was really nervous about being a lector today. Yay! Okay. So today we're talking about this word. It's kind of a weird word. It's called stewardship. Can you all say stewardship? If you, we break it up, it can be like a guy named Stuart and his ship, like Stuart's ship. Get it? Okay. So, yes, Kaylee. Robots uh, that are named Stuart and and Zelda? Sure. Uh, And as we talk about this, what this word really means, it means to take care of each other, right? And we do that in a lot of different ways. We can take care of each other by by helping each other out, but sometimes we take care of each other uh, in church a little bit differently. Sometimes we want to be able to have a lot of fun in church with each other, and that's great. But sometimes we know that as a church, we need to help people, right? We got to have our lights on in here, and we got to be able to have this space function. And we also know that there are a lot of people outside of our community that need a lot of help too, right? Now, some of you might remember this relic from the uh, before times. This was from uh, 2019 BC, before COVID. Um, Does anybody remember this? Yeah. So we have these three guys here, and I kind of like it because it reminds... Yeah, Pfeiffer? Um, You actually uh, can do what they're doing in real life. I don't want to try that. That looks kind of painful. But um, uh, it's 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 a big stretch. Maybe their spine broke. But we have these three people here. And I think it's cool that we have three people because it reminds us of a couple things. I think it reminds us of of ourselves, our church, and the whole world. I think it reminds us of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. 
and a good way for us to think about how our world is supported. So we, yeah, exactly. And the paperclip is the people. That's right. There's a paperclip inside. So what we have here is this is going to be the offering bowl that we're going to have for some young people. This is a different bowl that Pastor Sarah is going to use in just a minute. I know the anticipation is killing. But we're going to have this be our offering bowl. So when we come back in from Sunday fun day, during the passing of the peace, when it's offering time, you all and any young people or people that feel young at heart, if you have money that you want to donate or if you have other offerings, you can come up. It's going to be right over here and you can put it straight in here. And then over the next couple Sundays, what we're going to talk about is what do we want this money going towards? What would we want to fund or support? Yeah, Dylan? We would want to support food. Some food for the people that are hungry, yeah. Homeless people? Help the homeless people. That's awesome, Connor. Endangered animals. Endangered animals. Charities. Charities. You don't have to say when you don't have your hand up. Uh, So we are in an awesome time where we get to, since we have been gifted so much, since God loves us, we can love other people and share the gifts that we have with everyone. And one important thing that I want to mention, because when I was also your age, I always thought, well, I only have a penny. How am I going to make a big difference, right? How am I going to change these things? Yeah, favorite. Um, Little steps make big differences. Little steps make big differences. You save up. You save up, exactly. Compound interest is huge. But also, we can do different things, right? We don't have to just offer up money. We can offer up a lot of a lot of things. We can offer up our time by helping people out. We can offer up our talents. Um, for instance, Pfeiffer is really good at being sassy, and she does that a lot. Um, <laughs> but we can, but we can offer up lots of things. So one of the other things that we're doing today for a service project or a stewardship project, we're going to take care of some of the people at Family Supportive Housing. So we're all the whole church is going to participate in this after church. But during Sunday Fun Day, we're going to build the assembly line and we're going to get our whole church ready to complete this together. And so it's going to be fun, but it's also going to be a little bit of work right now, okay? So we're going to close out in a word of prayer. If you can please repeat after me. Dear God, please help us help others. Thank you for all we have been blessed with. And help us bless others. In your name we pray. Amen. The, uh, the staff in the office uh, have taught me the four-letter acronym TLDR. Too long, didn't read. They make fun of me quite often when I say I'm going to write a short newsletter article and it's 500 and some words. So um, for all the TLDR crowd, two phrases for our sermon time today. Number one, what we appreciate, appreciates. And secondly, collaboration makes what we do multiply, and grow. In 2004 uh, through 2006, I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Senegal, West Africa. And one of the, uh, and I lived in a, in a village, a very small remote village with around 800 people. We had two, two cars in the entire village and uh, one set of spigots for the entire village. And, and um, one of the things I learned to love about Senegalese culture is how they treated food, how they ate. That's why this massive bowl is here. Uh, in Senegal, there's no tables or, or plates, chairs, or utensils. Instead, the meal is served in a giant bowl, usually on a mat on the ground. And the, the dish that we ate every day was called chebujen which means rice or fish. It is the most delicious meal you will ever eat. There is one Senegalese restaurant in the Bay Area in San Francisco, Bisop Baobab. I I commend you to go there. But go to Senegal because the food there is better. 
So we would eat uh, the rice and fish. The rice was the bed. On the top was fish and vegetables of all kinds. Whole fish, whole chunks of vegetables, and to eat, you would be crouched down. The men sat a certain way, and the women sat another way, uh, which I can never figure out. Um, and you would take your food with your hand, put it in a ball, and eat it. And everyone in front of them had what they call a kanam, which means a, a space that was your own. And as the guest or the foreigner for the first year I was there, my village mother was always taking the chunks of fish, pulling all the bones out, and throwing them in front of my, my place, right? Because I was, uh, she was treating me with kindness that way. So you, everyone eats like that on the floor. And when meals happen, if anyone walks into your compound the building where you're eating, because you always eat outside, because it's hot. If anyone walks in when you're eating, there's a chorus of, come eat, kailek, kailek, come eat. And it is incredibly rude not to go kneel for a moment and take a bite of food. That's how important it is in Senegal to share what you have. Secondly, as I mentioned, we had two cars. And the way to get around Senegal was hitchhiking, which I loved. Hitchhiking is a hoot. We don't do it in the U.S. Uh, for various reasons, which makes me sad. But hitchhiking is a way to get around. Because when you don't have cars for everyone, you share what you have, right? But public transportation is, is also incredibly useful and helpful. And when I would have a longer travel trip, people are obviously traveling to go see family, and if the ride was more than three hours, there would be uh, brief pauses where when you stopped, there would be, you know, eight or nine, uh, usually women, coming to sell what they had for you to have a snack. So there'd be bags of water or juice that you bite the tip off and drink, or peanuts. They were peanut farmers. And so you'd buy a bag of peanuts, and they'd sell them through the windows, and then you'd be off. Likewise, when you are eating in a car full of people or a bus, it is rude not to offer what you have to the person next to you. Water is an exception. But when you are eating the peanuts, you would just say to the person next to you, go luck, why don't you eat? And it's polite for to, to take one. Now you can imagine this experience, maybe, coming from a plate food, protect your, your, your food culture, in fact, the house I was raised in, my father, his favorite saying was, there are three things you don't mess with. My food, my money, and my woman. Not necessarily in that order. Right? Or any of you who have raised kids or been around kids, when you steal their french fry, what do they do? Mom, auntie, grandma. So to be in Senegal was, was a pretty jarring experience and a powerful one. And I bring up these stories because, to me, how Senegal understands food, I think, is how God yearns for us to understand our own resources and how we take care of or steward those resources. Again, as I started, what we appreciate appreciates, meaning there is enough. And the more we share, the more we find out that there is enough and the more we share, our heart expands. Collaboration makes what we do multiply and grow. When we share what we have, we can all live. Did you know there's enough food in the world for everyone to have enough, but we waste so much of it? And it rots and creates methane. And that's one of the key reasons we have such a problem with our ozone layer. Because of rotting food. So two Bible stories for our reading today. Perhaps one of the most iconic verses and sayings of Jesus, in my opinion. He says, uh, don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and, and rust will come and wreck it. And then here is one of his most famous sayings. Instead, store up for yourself treasures in heaven. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What we value and what we focus on is our treasure, and our heart naturally goes there. There's a writer named Lynn Twist who wrote a book called The Soul of Money. 
I highly recommend that book to any of you who grew up in, in, in families of origin or who struggle with money and, and scarcity and whose money has a control over. It's a fantastic book, The Soul of Money. And she's the one who came up with the phrase that I started the sermon with, what we appreciate appreciates. For her, appreciation is defined as our conscious attention and our conscious intention. Again, Lynn Twist defines appreciation as our conscious attention and our conscious intention. So if we're focused on scarcity, on there not being enough, if we're envious of what other people have, then it's true. We will never have enough, nor will we be truly happy. But if we focus on our capacity to sustain ourselves and our family and how we can contribute in a meaningful way to the well-being of others, then our appreciation for what we have grows. Notice very clearly that it starts with us being able to care for ourselves. If you're ever part of a religious organization that tells you to give and not care for your family first, you walk out that door. It starts with caring for our family and then being excited about how we can contribute in a meaningful way to the well-being of others. Again, that's the beauty of how we wait, we ate in Senegal. And it took some getting used to. And friends, I can tell you the exact moment when my heart was broke open and I recognized that I had been changed. I got care packages when I was in Senegal. And I would have to hitchhike or ride my bicycle 10 kilometers, 6 miles to the, to the post office to pick it up. And in those care packages were things like Pop-Tarts, one of the, my favorite things that I miss. I don't eat Pop-Tarts anymore. American peanut butter, candy. My friends and family knew what I loved, and they would send it to me. And I remember st- rolling into my, uh, my compound with the first box that I had received, and I went into my house, and I shut the door. And I ripped that thing open and I started eating all my favorites. And about three minutes in, I started crying. Because how ugly is it that a family that took me in, that shared the best parts of the fish and the vegetables when my little sisters surely needed that protein a lot more than I did. How dare I not share the abundance of what was in that care package? And just let me tell you, if you've ever been with someone who's never tried Pop Rocks... Those care packages became sources of conversation, hilarity. My village siblings, my brother and sister in the village, I had three little sisters and one little brother. The the joy that it brought them, or all the other folks in the village, to share with them made that food taste way better than hoarding it alone. And from then on, I have never, since then, I have never been able to eat in front of people without offering, ask my kids, or sharing what I have. And I'm not bragging about that. That is what living in a culture of abundance and enough does for us. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The second phrase, collaboration makes what we do multiply and grow. Jim read from uh, Matthew 22. That is our prescribed reading for today. And a little background on that portion of the reading It's from the later part in Jesus' story when the religious leaders are trying to trap him. And so the the Pharisees and the Herodians, so the Pharisees are some of the religious powerful, and the Herodians are the local Roman folk, the local government types. They're out to trap Jesus. And they craft a brilliant question to get him. And we know from history that it is a trick question, right? Who is it lawful to pay taxes, they ask him. Now the Pharisees of Jesus' day would have seen the tribute tax that all Roman, uh, Roman, um, they weren't citizens, what's the word? Thank you. That all Roman subjects had to pay. The Pharisees saw that as heretical and anti-nationalist to pay money to a pagan emperor. But also, the Herodians, the local government, the local powerful who would have been present, if Jesus said, oh, you don't have to pay, 
it would have been treason. So Jesus is kind of stuck. But of course, it's Jesus, the Son of God. And so he understands and knows what to say. And he lifts the coin up and he brilliantly sidesteps their trap with give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. But I think these verses are so profound for us today as well. Thousands of years later, reminding us that we are always and ever intertwined with the government and the leadership around us, no matter how angry we are at it. And that we are also called as people of faith to steward and care for all that is around us accordingly. Not just our federal government, our state government, but all the committees we serve. If you're on scouts or in our school systems, on our school boards, local organizations, even the neighborhood that you live in, we get to bring all of who we are to those spaces. And furthermore, all of our giftedness, when brought together, can make a huge difference. Jesus isn't saying only pay to Caesar or only pay to God. Jesus is saying everything about who we are, we get to share with others. And collaboration, when we do share what we have and who we are, it makes what we do multiply and grow. In this conversation with the religious and local leadership, they only see Jesus as a troublemaker. They see the potential for his new ideas and energy as something that will take away what they have built. They want to control Jesus and are avoiding change. Jesus sees it, calls them out, and redirects them to collaboration. Now, even as I say we are called to collaboration, I wonder how many of you loved group projects as a kid or a student? Right? A few of us. We all have our horror stories of group projects. Have you ever thought about how your daily life is a group project? How we are so intertwined that how we live and move and act affects others? I think sometimes it's easy in American culture to believe that we're not because we have our space, we have our, our area, we're in our own little cars, we are constantly controlling everything about what we do. But the moment that we are hurting, the moment that we are in need, is when we know how intertwined and how much we need each other. So whether we like it or not, Prince of Peace is also a giant group project. We have councils and committees, we have people doing and serving and acting, and everyone sharing their gifts. And we're doing this while dealing with natural personality differences, people who have different passions. At our best, Prince of Peace, we are collaborating with respect for the giftedness we all bring. It's a tender balance, it's a gentle web, and sometimes we will mess up. We will step on toes. We will make each other upset. We might say the wrong thing or act out of frustration or act out of whatever pain and struggle we have at home and bring it into group settings. And again, that's why I said at the beginning of worship, that's why the heart of what we do is ELCA Christian worship. Because we are rooted in confession and forgiveness. We are rooted in in hearing God's word and hearing how God's word is challenging us and inspiring us. We're surrounded by baptized children of God and our core identity as beloved children. And that can never be taken away from us. And then we do gather and share bread that is in a giant bowl. Maybe not this big. But at the heart of what we do is we share what we have. Collaboration makes what we do expand and grow. It's pretty cool to be part of this church. And so our financial support of this church and its programs and that offerings support of organizations outside of us, our synod, our ELCA church, Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services, 
our staff and our property, our social justice ministry, the work we do with and for youth, our fellowship events. Everything we do is about collaboration for the sake of God's kingdom. Everything we do is about collaboration. Or as Paul famously said, the body of Christ. And we do need all parts and all types of support. So as much as this specific Sunday is about our finances, just a reminder, we are nothing without everyone showing up with their time and their giftedness. It is stewardship season where your council is hard at work crafting a budget that is faithful and has integrity based on the money that we will bring in and based on the needs of this community and our neighbors. And I outlined already in that very long stewardship email what our needs are as a congregation. And the numbers are all there. And I asked us all to consider how we each are able to grow in our financial giving. The numbers are there. But today's sermon and today's worship service is about the heart of stewardship. How what we appreciate, how what we appreciate appreciates. How collaboration makes us, makes what we do multiply and grow. And if you haven't heard anything I've heard so far, then uh, Sarah McLaughlin is going to close our sermon. What we're doing here, friends, is building a mystery. Our support of this church, Prince of Peace, is grounded in this notion that where we give our attention and our focus will grow. I believe there's enough and more. We have an abundance in so many ways. Thank you for sharing out of your abundance. And thank you for all the ways that we are collaborating for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the needs of our neighbors, and for the sake of the thriving of all. Amen. Let us stand as we sing the best stewardship hymn that ever existed.
for our time of prayers. Your response to hear us, O God, will be your mercy is great. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Faithful God, your spirit animates the church throughout the world and binds believers near and far into the body of Christ. Equip us for collaboration, which is the heart of the work of faith, and enlarge our hearts for the labor of love. Hear us, O God. Creating God, the seas roar, the earth rejoices, and the heavens are glad at the wonders of all that you have made. Bless the work of ecologists and conservationists, and all those who safeguard the riches of creation. Hear us, O God. Sovereign God, your rule and authority is over the cosmos. As you once worked through the ruler Cyrus for the good of your people, accomplish your purposes through the work of elected leaders and public servants, near and far. Guide them with your wisdom, compassion, and humility. Hear us, O God. Caring God, your arms enfold all who are lonely, oppressed, despairing, sick, and suffering. Pour out your abundant mercy on all whom this world has neglected, abandoned, and forgotten, that they may know your joy. We especially pray for the names of the people we speak aloud or silently now. Hear us, O God. Almighty God, all life belongs to you. When acts of hate and violence hurt others, help us to be people of reconciliation, justice, and peace. We especially pray for all who are suffering because of the conflict in the Gaza Strip. We pray for our local Jewish and Muslim siblings who are facing a rise in hate crimes here and all over the world. God, help us be peacemakers. Help us speak into hard situations and mend broken relationships. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. It is time now for our passing of the peace and the gathering of our offering. The offering plates are scattered uh, throughout the rear of the congregation. Uh, we have a QR code if you choose to give electronically. Again, as you pass the peace today, it is not just a time of saying peace. It is a time uh, of celebrating reconciliations and the mending of relationships. And so I say to you, the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace and collect our offering.
Friends, I invite you to stand as you are willing and able. As we prepare to receive communion, a few directions and uh, very clear invitations. This table, this communion, this bread, this wine and juice are welcome to absolutely, are, are open to absolutely everyone. Uh, so if you have never received communion, uh, this is how you do it. You open your hands and you receive the bread, which is vegan, and you dip it in either the wine, which is red, or the grape juice, which is clear. We want to extend a special welcome to anyone who has been excluded from communion or felt that there has been an inhospitable response to communion uh, because Christ is the host and he welcomes and invites everyone. In that spirit, friends, let's take a pause and prepare our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to receive communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the Lord's Prayer in whatever style or language is closest to your hearts, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for each and every one of us, the children of God. Our ushers will direct you when to come forward, uh, and you may be seated. Communion assistants, please come up.
And for our friends joining us online, the body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We close uh, our worship with a time of announcements so that we all know what's going on, happenings, and ways to continue to connect and be involved here at Prince of Peace. Uh, Just a special note that uh, the campus will be closed Tuesday through Friday of this week for termite resurrection. (laughs) So um, a few programmatic shifts. Bible study will be, uh, is Tuesdays at 10 a.m., every Tuesday at 10 a.m. It'll be at your house, a.k.a. the parsonage. Get it? Get it? Yeah? The church owns the house? Okay. Um, If you need the address, please come talk to me after church. Uh, It's going to be a fantastic gathering with treats galore. Uh, We do have confirmation class tonight. Uh, We're doing the once-a-week confirmation, so if you are a person of prayer, please pray for our confirmation students and for Drew and I as their teachers. Uh, It's our second class uh, in this this method. Already, Drew and I love it. So uh, that is tonight. It is on site for all of our confirmation families. And then um, I think there are other announcements. Who's going to come up first? Drew, thank you. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Drew, the Director of Youth and Service here. Uh, some announcements. November 10th, 11th, and 12th, uh, all of our middle schoolers and our high schoolers, uh, I'm sorry, all of our elementary schoolers and middle schoolers from third to eighth grade are invited to go to a fall retreat at Mount Cross in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Uh, it's going to be a great time where we can be together. Um, and Abby Marcel is one of our high schoolers who is on the planning team for that retreat. So she's going to be helping to put that event on, which is really cool. Uh, next Sunday, we are going to be having our annual ha- Halloween event here. So we'll be going trick-or-treating next door. We'll have lots of games and candy uh, and encourage everyone to dress up in costume. It's going to be a lot of fun. And today, immediately following our service, uh, we have a uh, really easy assembly line service project set up in the uh, fellowship hall that the kids during our Sunday Funday time were able to put together. They were able to make some great instructions. Uh, We have 35 hygiene kits with things like soap uh, and shampoo and body lotion. And then we have 35 uh, meal kits that don't have the full sandwich with this one, but um, uh, a beverage, some crackers, uh, stuff to be able to snack on and stuff that is kid-friendly. 
friendly as well. So I would encourage all of you, uh, maybe before you have your first cup of coffee, uh, to go through, make a, a bag, should take no more than about 30 seconds or so. Uh, and then if, if you would be so kind, we'll have another table where you can write a card for uh, the family that uh, receives these kits. When a family comes into family supportive housing, they're there for about 90 days, and oftentimes they come with nothing but the clothes on their back. So just being able to have their basic needs met uh, with these hygiene kits and meal kits when they first get there is a, uh, a big relief to them. So um, if you would be willing to join us after church, that would be amazing. Other announcements. Thank you, Drew. And Pastor Sherry, you stole my thunder. I love the resurrection of the termites. I'd rather just say we're killing them. We're getting rid of them. Um, so just a quick update on property. Uh, we are closed, as Pastor Sarah said, for termite work. Um, if you're wandering aimlessly around the parking lot, if you look in the far back corner, we finally built our new shed uh, to help with the storage uh, as we prepare for vacating the classroom wing for the preschool. Uh, so that was completed. Uh, we also re-landscaped uh, the front of the parsonage, our house. So go check it out. Drive by. You know, drive by, honk your horn, wave at them, you know, do whatever you want. Um, the preschool is moving along. They're still working on getting all of their um, permits, uh, but we're making good progress. As a part of that, I think we talked about it when, when you all approved the preschool, uh, it may have an impact on the farmer's market. Um, the good news is it did have an impact on the farmer's market, but in a positive way. Starting this week, the farmer's market will be over here on this side, all right? It allows them to have a little bit more space so they can have a little bit more vendors. So this week, because we're closing down the rest of the campus, they'll be over on this side, and they'll be there uh, from now on, all right? So now I'm going to switch topics here. Maria, thank you. Um, I know that I am, have white hair, and I'm one of the older folks around here. How many of you still actually read the newspaper digitally or hard copy? Great. How many of you saw the front page this morning? Great. The reason I'm saying that, it's about an immigrant's family, a migrant family's odyssey from Venezuela. On uh, November 1st is our next table talk, and it's titled The Strength of Migrants and Their Struggles. Uh, it'll be um, a great evening of stories to help understand and create uh, awareness and empathy for, the, for what they go through, what they give up, and, and then finally how we can help them. Um, that'll be November 1st. It's at 6 p.m. It's Wednesday. The sign-ups and Sunday night, whatever it is, 30th? The following, not, th not today. Right, right, no, no, next Sunday, the 30th, or whatever that date is, okay? Yeah, like I said, the 29th. So um, please invite uh, neighbors, friends, other family members um, to join in this community effort uh, and help create more awareness around the migrations. Okay. And I'm just going to reiterate what he said. So we would love to have our church family support this program. It's Table Talks. Again, I'm going to say it's Wednesday, November 1st at 6 o'clock. And the meal will be put on by, I'm not exactly sure on how to say this, but a, 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 a family, Ernestina and her husband, Gil, were able to get like, not a scholarship, but the, it's a, pro, a funding to start their own company. So they started a food truck company, and they have their own food truck, and they go to a um, kitchen and fix all the food, and they will be the um, couple that will be putting on the meal on Wednesday. So we would love you to come. Please sign up, support our church, invite your friends. Again, it's Wednesday at 6 o'clock, and I would say 95% of you don't have to do anything but come, eat, and listen. The other 5% will do all the rest of the work. So thank you. Thank you, Maria. Hello, everyone. A um, couple of announcements for me. Next week is Reformation Sunday. 
it can also be considered pre-Halloween, but um, we are going to celebrate Reformation Sunday, and I'm encouraging each of you to dress up in your best Luther outfit. So we're going to see who can look the most like Luther, um, and I would love it to look out on this um, sea of people and see so many Luthers. So I enjoy, uh, I encourage you to come and dress like Luther and um, come to think about Reformation in a new way next Sunday. So that's a pitch for that. The second pitch is for, um, I'm starting a grief support group. Um, and you don't have to necessarily be an active grief. It is more of a transitions support group. As we grieve things, even the good things, like, say, a preschool coming onto our property, it is an excellent, exciting thing, but we also are losing something. As we give something, we lose something. But it is with a happy heart, right? But that still means that we have to work with the transitions, transitions in life. So I'm starting a group. It'll be um, starting the first week of November, but if you look in the um, peace notes online, there's a link to a form, and I would love for you to fill it out. It's anonymous to let me know what days and times work for you. So um, stay tuned on that, but please fill out the form. Let me know um, what works for you and what you're most um, struggling with or want help with. And I feel like that'll be a good launch for some of the projects that I'm going to be doing over the next um, six to nine months. So that is all. As we close uh, this Stewardship Sunday, uh, a reminder that the pledge cards are in the back on the table. Uh, both the uh, big, beautiful table and then the closer table. Thank you for discerning your pledge and commitment to Prince of Peace in the year to come. We'd like to have all those in, uh, ideally, by the first week of December. So you do have time to discern and think and to pray, to talk with your people. And if you have uh, more desire for discernment or want to know more, you want to know more about the nitty-gritty and the numbers, come talk to me or our stewardship committee, which is uh, Karin Luton. Anne Hess, and Reiner Huller, who's traveling today. So we'll be reminding you every week of, of filling out those pledge cards. It is time to eat coffee and to use our hands to, to care for our neighbors and pack uh, care gifts for the uh, family shelter. Uh, before we do that, let us bless one another and let us sing. Please stand as you are able. The God of hope, Jesus Christ, source of forgiveness, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing. in you. 
Please, please be seated and enjoy the postlude music.